What's up, hybrids? Welcome back to another episode of the Phantom Hybrid Podcast. This is Hanako, and I am here with Anthony and Mike, and we are discussing episode six of the Wheel of Time series. And the funny thing is, this is the first uh, episode that we are discussing in 2023. We're actually like trying to catch up. We had recorded the first five episodes um, when the series came out back at the end of 2021, 2022. And then, you know, lots of stuff came out last year. And we just kind of put this one to the back burner until we knew that we were getting a season two. And so we we know we're getting season two and season three, right? They got renewed for two seasons at the same time. Um, I think so. Mm-hmm. So we're going to pick back up with our episode six discussion and um i forgot how much i like this show because it had been a while since we've seen it and i know anthony you posted on your facebook page that when you started re-watching this episode you were like i forgot how beautiful this show was yeah i was like God, the costumes the set the way it's shot everything is gorgeous mm-hmm. the whole white way they set up the white room was just like yeah like mm-hmm. oh my god! Like the first that one shot at the beginning where they go up the white room and you yes. it is and everything like kind of blows out. And I was you like, see all the ajas, and you see is this when uh, Swan <laughs> Sanche is making her uh, walk? Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's like you see all the colors around like the rainbow, and it's that like she goes in. Shot. Like, yes. Yeah, I was like shit. Okay, well let's start it up. So. The beginning of the episode, we get background on a character named Suan Sanche, who we later find out is the Amarlin C. And she is a little girl in this flashback. She is a fisherman's daughter. And, you know, we just see them living their, their regular lives. They're going out to catch fish. Her father is uh, an amputee. He only has one hand. And you see him kind of struggling with the net so that he can try to catch the fish. And little Suwan starts channeling and unravels the net. And, you know, her father is impressed with her because apparently her power has been growing and she's learning to control it more and more. But at the same time, he's kind of scared because she's just done her, her, you know, she's just channeled pretty much in plain view. And as he says, the rule is that it's only supposed to be when it's the two of them when no one else is around. Now, when you look at the scene, it appears that nobody else is around and that she's okay. And I mean, unless you really see her doing the hand motions, I think you can really tell what she's doing because as Anthony has mentioned time and time again, you can't see the you know we see the white and the black when men or women are channeling but i don't think the average person can see that right right only only channelers can see the weaves is what they call them yeah oh yes the weaves so you think it's pretty okay it's pretty safe until they get back to their house and someone has burned it to the ground and they've also put that symbol on the gate about what what is that symbol again it's the eyes of that that symbol okay. it is the the sidine and sidar it looks like yin and yang yes it represents the male and female side of the one power okay so yes yeah, so somebody has apparently seen her channeling they burn down the house they put the symbol up on the gate so now her father is sending her away to the white tower so that she can one be safe too so that she can learn how to channel her power and yes. um I the, tell you, the the people of tear are very anti um anti channeling so why is that it, it just is <laughs> yeah they, they had some stuff happen during the breaking okay um in the area and they're just yeah they, they don't they're not and down they hold a grudge for three thousand years yes they do okay. There, okay. there's there's a specific prophecy about the dragon reborn he has to go to the stone of tear mm-hmm. and do something which i don't know if they're going to do this in the show but it'll be very important 
Okay. When, when it comes up to our discussion of Thorian, we talk about Thorian tales. Ah, okay. Because there's a reason why it's called the Stone of Tear. That's a, it's like a fortress. Okay. There's something in the in the fortress which the dragon reborn needs. Ah, okay. Mm. Okay. So and and if you in the beginning, if there's a shot. Um, going over the water in the mm-hmm. background you can see the stone of tear in the mountain oh is that what that is because i was wondering that, i just had that to building see in the background it was like what is that it, it looks like a castle but yeah mm-hmm. it's 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 huge but mm-hmm. okay that's what that is okay but anyway um so yeah poor little swan has to leave her father to go to the two towers and this is kind of, you know, giving us the background about her. She's she's a poor, you know, she's a poor peasant girl with this amazing power. And she's being sent to the two towers. And that, like I said, as we see a few moments later in the episode, this is the Amaryllis seat. I was like, okay, talk about a glow up. You go from being a fisherman's daughter to the what the, the most supposedly the most powerful person in the world i mean is that kind of how it is with the amulet scene Bec- because with the amulet not, scene not because... necessarily okay not necessarily um okay. the amulet seat is obtained through political machinations ah, so okay. you don't necessarily have to be the most powerful it helps to be powerful okay because they then the other um ajas will respect you okay but, um, but there are times when sometimes they don't put the most powerful Aja member if if in that position because sometimes the more powerful members are behind the scenes doing things. Oh, okay. They're the ones really ruling. Oh, that sounds familiar. Okay, right. never mind. That never sounds mind. familiar. <laughs> it does. It does. It does. But but Swan is 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 fairly powerful. She mm-hmm. is, but she also, um, there, there was a lot of political things behind the scenes that got her into power. But it yeah, was very important. There seems important. to be a lot of um, tension in the white room when when she when she does appear. You know. Um, yeah. Yeah. So anyway, like I said, we get the introduction of the Amarlin seat. All of the Ajas are there. They're they're dressed in their colors. They're waiting to receive her. And she comes in. You this gown, y'all. If I ever decided to cosplay, it would be that. But that would be a hard thing to walk around in for a whole like conven- convention. But oh my God, it's so gorgeous. But she walks in and they're having she's having the trial for the false dragon who um you know if you remember from the previous episodes he kind of got loose and he kind of uh fought several of the Aes Sedai and ended up killing Kareni and um actually had killed the land and several of the others until Nynaeve I still say land wasn't dead I think he was dead well he, he was close dead. He was close enough for Nynaeve to think that he was dead. He was dead. Because and in then, this world, if you die, you you die. There, there isn't a... You, to, to come back, you have to be... Re, you have to be spun back through reincarnation. Okay. So maybe he was on the cusp. He was on the cusp, but he, he was wasn't dead. He was on the dead. cusp. But, I mean, he was... He was a goner enough for Nynaeve to... She thought he was dead. <laughs> she thought he was dead, and I guess that was all that matters because that was when she touched the the source and just, yeah, kind of blew the power out of the dragon and healed everyone's wounds and demonstrated lots of power. And um, this is enough for Leandrin to start some shit over. Um, and I'm about sick of her, like her, her, and her little attitude. I'm like, look, look, bitch. Leandrin, I don't know what her deal is, 
I mean, there's there's a little bit implied in the episode, you know, one, she obviously has something against Moraine. Mm-hmm. Obviously. And then, you know, even after they have their their meeting with the Amelin C, after that, when she's like, I, you forget, I know you. So whatever you're doing, oh, friend, I was like, something about Moraine is rubbing you the wrong way. And you were just like, she literally challenged the Amelin seat. Like, I understand, you know, the Amelin seat and Moraine have to pick, put up this little pretense because of the stuff that we find out later on in the episode. But I kind of felt like Leandrin got off very light for the way that she was behaving for the way that she was speaking it's almost like she was in that room trying to get other people to challenge moraine and and the amelin seat and i was like you are really bold you're sitting there and i mean just the attitude when when the amelin seat told her that you know um i'll think on your penance and i'll render judgment tomorrow she's sitting there looking like I was like, girl, you don't know. You sit here with an attitude in front of a black mama. This is not the route you want to go. <laughs> this is not the route I you want to go. I see it. And I, I'm just like, I, I'm looking at it like, God. I mean, you you could, yeah, it's like like you said, you could tell there's some animosity between them. And I'm just like, like, you know, you did wrong. It's like, why are you why are you still like being like this? I feel if, like if, Leandrin has animosity with everybody that's not a red Aja. Yeah. Yeah, that's all the red. <laughs> all the reds are all like that. <laughs> because they hate men. I mean, well apparently I not as kinda, much as we thought that's they did. Strong. Is that hate is a strong word. Mm-hmm. But you know, if a man, if they think a man can channel, they will kill him. I mean, that, and then they'll be like, oh, my bad, my bad. So, yeah, they, they, well, okay, if I remember correctly, um, Landrin and Moraine and Swan were all novices at the same time. Okay. And they were raised to the shawl around the same time. So there's mm-hmm. some stuff from back when they were novices that they used to get into that that you know is a source of all of that angst issues so leandra needs to she needs to let that go it's been 20 years there's another character in the book elida who is also a red and i think they combined elida and leandra okay into you know into just just one character okay yeah because in, in, in the series of books, they're very similar. So okay. I can I can see why they would combine the two. Okay. 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 So yeah, but they're, the they're thing Leandra knows problem. that Moraine is hiding something. Um the and she's very curious. But the blues are I told you before, the blues are like the CIA. The CIA. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. They do a lot of things. They don't tell nobody about what they're doing. And the Reds are are the complete opposite. Mm-hmm. They they what they tell everything that they're doing. Yes, they do. Okay. The, okay. And they're and they're not. They don't they don't hide anything. Everybody knows what the Reds are doing. Okay, yeah. well, a bit, <clears throat> they don't know everything that every Red is doing, as as we find out in this episode. Because Moraine had a quick comeback for Leandrin at one point, but we'll go into that. Let's talk about let's talk about this little trial because when. They bring the false dragon out. He's very defiant towards the Amelin Sea. He's like, you know what they say about the Aes Sedai outside of the city? They say that you guys are weak. You know, he said, yeah, what did he say? Years ago, if I would have said that I was coming for the Amelin seat, that I was coming to knock her off her throne or whatever the case is, he was like, they would have stoned me. They would have killed me, you know, for even suggesting it. But when I said I was coming for you, I had an army within a year. And as he's saying this, I, I don't know, something about the way Moraine was looking at him, like, it's almost like she was trying to tell him, like, shut up, shut up. 
you don't want to say this to her but at the same time it felt like she was worried or scared because she knew it was also true you know and it's like what we see throughout the episode like you said there's a lot of political maneuvering going on and we have seen in the previous episodes that there are some people who are kind of like okay um maybe the Aes Sedai are not what they're supposed to be or maybe they shouldn't be as powerful or just a little bit of dissent amongst various peoples and it's kind of like before okay I will say this before the reveal about Suwan and Moraine actually being together being an idol it was, I don't know, it just struck me as weird the way she was looking at him because it's like, oh, what he's saying is true. And then it's kind of like you're sitting there looking around the room like, okay, so if this is the case, if people want the Amarillo seat thrown off of her, you know, out of her seat of power, like who in this room will go along with that? And I don't know, Moraine, I just feel like, Moraine gives a lot away with her face her facial expressions like during that whole time I was like the way that she was looking when Suwan walked in the room of course now I can look at it a little bit differently because I know the truth but the way that she walked in and the way Moraine was looking at her it's almost like she couldn't breathe and Mm. the first time I watched this episode I thought it was because she was scared about the interaction or the exchange because of course it was already said that oh yeah the ambulance seat is not going to be pleased because they had um they had gentled the false dragon and that was not what they were supposed to do like he was supposed to be brought before her for a fair trial and they kind of bypassed that I mean I feel like it was warranted because of what he was doing but still, if that's, you know, if that's what the the head honcho in charge says, this is how we do things and you do something against it. Yeah, you're going to be scared about it. Moraine looked at first terrified. And then the way the Sawan sat down and she just kind of looked like, mm. I was like, there is so, like, is nobody else in the room reading this? There uh-huh. is like a weird tension between them. And I didn't it's know like, what it's like, was at first. It's like that episode of Martin when Tommy and Pam were start, started dating and Gina was behind them and she was like, ooh. <laughs> it's like, yeah. I, 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 I did the same thing Like when I first watched that. I was like, why is she looking like that? And it's like, I couldn't tell so much with Sawan, but definitely with Moraine. Moraine had to look like, oh, oh. Like, mm-hmm. ooh. Like, keep calm, and now keep you calm. realize it's because they haven't seen each other in two years and again we find out in this episode that they and are lovers so it's that kind they of hadn't like... seen each other <laughs> yeah. on and your they... knees like i'm ne- i'm never gonna oh, i'm never gonna on. hear oh holy night again the same like really? i can't even listen to that song anymore really <laughs> i just can't do it now like damn but yeah i mean and the thing is, the bad, the cool thing, the thing about it is, like, they're actually a cute couple. Like, when they're laying together and stuff like that, beyond the kissing, like, which was awkward. But when they're laying together, when they're, like, just chilling, I'm like, okay, I see it. Okay, sure. so since you, since you mentioned it, we have to talk about that kiss. I, we, we go, we're going to be all over the place with this. We got to talk about that kiss, because when we first watched this episode, that kiss bothered me so bad. I was like, that has got to be the driest, most, I, I, I don't know. I just feel like if I haven't seen my lover for two years and I'm finally in front of them, I'm finally able to, to kind of be in the same room with them. And I mean, apparently she went through some kind of portal so that they could be alone It it was one of those. It was one of those. Like, I don't think even one of them are. Neither one of them are gay, so 
is possible that was the first time they ever kissed another woman or you are talking about the actresses the actresses oh okay okay oh because i was gonna Uh, say um that's not the okay well okay well on that note actually in the book there's there is there is a hint that there might be something between them Mm -hmm. but it's always said that they were the closest of friends Okay. Because Moraine actually later she does have a love interest that is not Swan Sanche, and I'm not going to tell you who it is, but mm-hmm. she actually does have someone that that she has a relationship with later. Okay. And it's, it's a man. So. Okay. But I mean, even I, I don't but know. It just seemed even awkward. It... it just seemed awkward, and I don't even know if it was. It was awkward I won't, to me. I won't say it was and it awkward. lacked passion. <laughs> and it, that's like, what that's what it was. and i mean okay even if that was the first time the two actresses had ever kissed another woman whatever it's like yeah, it was awkward. i don't know i guess i feel like 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 you said mike they look good together i just i don't feel the chem like i don't feel the romantic chemistry between them two and I think if I could, it wouldn't bother me so much. But it's like you give us this scene, and it just—I—I I don't know. Even with the banter that they had with each other, um, I don't know. It just didn't feel natural. And I mean, yeah. granted, it—it—it—they're it, supposed to be acting, so your job as an actress is to sell it, is is to make us believe it. And I just, I didn't get it from those two. Yeah, I I mean, it's like, I'm looking at it now, and it's like, she kissed, and then it looked like, the first kiss was, on the second one looked like, Siwan missed her whole mouth, almost missed her whole face altogether with the kiss, and then they kind of brought it back together. I was like, Well, I won't even say that, because if you you look at the way that they're kissing, and yes, we're about to go... (laughs) <laughs> this is an anatomy of a kiss i know it's not I, <laughs> it's just one of those things that bother me it's like the the kiss is supposed to be it's it's supposed to speak of like longing like oh my god this is the first time we've been back together this that and the other and it's supposed to be it i think in a sense a little bit of playful with a little bit of like i said that longing and passion but i just didn't feel it between these and like and like you said if you had you hadn't seen your lover for one or two years like that's not how you kiss them like you would think that that would be like more of like just smushed together and like you know just like feeling like feeling the passion between the two of them and it's like you don't really feel a lot of passion like you said it's like even when she was touching someone's tattoo saying these are new it's like you can see it was it was almost fondness. It wasn't really, it was, it was kind of sensual, but it wasn't really. It's was like they both have, it seems like the two of them have problems showing affection. Like they, like they have problems like showing each other like the love that they have or the amount of emotion that they really want to show. It's like, it seems like they're so used to holding their emotions back that they don't know how to let go. And okay, like maybe that I can buy because that like, that is yeah. almost how it is. Like they're so, like we don't know how long this this relationship has gone on, um. So we don't know how long they've had to hide it, and then of course we find out in this episode that Sawan was a blue before she ascended to um, Amalyn's seat. So it's possible this could have gone on for a long time, and then of course once Suwan became like the the leader maybe whatever might have been there they had to kind of like you know it's kind of like that whole uh you don't date your in your subordinates or whatever maybe it was something like that and they're having to hold back but it's just the fact that I just I don't feel it with them like I feel I feel Lan and Nynaeve more. I feel Perrin and Egwene, even though that's not a couple, I feel that Perrin has feelings for her. I can feel it in their performances. 
I don't I don't get the whole Swan and Moraine thing. It just I I don't know. May maybe it has to do with the fact that they've been distant from each other. Maybe it has to do with the fact that they have to play these roles. I think I felt it more at the end when she had to um banish Moraine. Yeah. I felt it more in that scene than I felt it in the scene where they were actually like together together. So I don't know if that makes sense. I don't know if I was just looking too much into it, but I was just like, I just, I'm not buying it. Um, one of the things I thought of was that they have a secret that they share. Um, okay. And I said I had a prophecy of the birth of the dragon reborn. Yes, I remember they, them talking about they that. They were the mm-hmm. only two who were present when it was spoken. Okay. And so they have kept this secret together. For 20 years. So it and they've been working towards trying to find find the Dragon Reborn. They've been doing this together. Mm-hmm. That was the whole purpose of of Moraine helping her, you know, and the blues helping her get enough to become the armor in the seat. Okay. It was the two of them had their own you know, thing going on mm-hmm. to, to try to control the situation. So it's possible that the only reason, only thing that brought them together that close was the fact that they have this thing that they can't share with anyone but each other. Okay. And so I'm just saying, maybe that is why it kind of lacks the romanticism of relationship. They're just kind of together. Because Out of necessity? They, or out of convenience, it if it, yeah, that can it, be called convenient, but yeah, okay, I get what but you're saying. Same thing. It's, it's like yeah. you know, when we talk about people who get together because they shared a tragedy, mm-hmm. it wasn't that they were just attracted to each other, it was that something brought them together, right? And this is, and like I said, this is the only time together when they're together, that's the only time they can truly be themselves, mm-hmm. so it makes them closer and whatnot so right yeah so they built a relationship based on that Mm, okay it's not like it's not like you know lan who's trying to be stoic and naive who's this fiery passionate person (laughs) you know trying to you know attracted to him or it's not like perrin who's been pining for you know Egwene for all these years Mm mm-hmm it's just, and I, yeah and i guess that like i said that's just the thing it's like i just i want to feel that like if i'm looking at you as a couple and you're it's being presented like okay maybe it's not being presented here like they are just like so in love with each other but i just feel like if you're going to be in a secret relationship with someone it's not going to be because you have casual feelings for them or, you know, oh, yeah, I like them a little bit. You're not going to risk. I mean, because if you think about it, like, I don't know if this was also pertaining to their relationship, but Moraine had said to Sawan, as far as them searching for the dragons, or I think it was Sawan who said it to Moraine, she was like, if we're found out, we'll be stilled. And I was like, okay, so is it just about y'all working together to find the dragon or if people find out that y'all are together? It's the working together to find the dragon. Okay. Because the Reds are notorious for having relationships with each other. Yeah, and and I get that, but there's a difference between two two regular Aes Sedai having a relationship with each other and then an Aes Sedai having a relationship with the person who leads them i mean they it, call her mother and yeah, i mean it, it was funny it when pro- moraine it, called her that and she was like i hate it when you call me that but it's it like, probably it, wouldn't be that big of a deal it would be one of those scenes where they be like oh god you guys you can't do it and then they'd punish her but to be hiding the fact that you're doing something you're not supposed to do and you're hiding it from everyone and then why you're hiding it from everyone, mm-hmm. that could be a problem. Yeah. Because one, they're not supposed to lie. So they're being deceitful without lying. Yeah. And that's a problem. And and you can see it because when 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 Leandrin calls out Moraine 
about, yeah, so you've been away from this tower, uh, you know, off and on for 20 years. No one knows what you do. No one knows where you go. So what's going on? And oh yeah, by the way, you were also with the most powerful channeler that we've ever seen. Why didn't you tell us about her? You know, it's like Leandrin was pushing those buttons, trying to get Moraine in trouble. And because she was doing that, Swan had no choice but to question Moran. And you could see the irritation on her face, even now after knowing the the what their relationship is, or even before knowing what their relationship is, you could tell the way she looked at it, she was like, Moraine, so what have you been doing? And she looked at her like you've been us. <laughs> <laughs> but and the cool, the cool thing about both of them. There, both of them being blues, she, Suwan, knew how to ask her mm-hmm. without getting her to to tell what mm-hmm. she was doing. But you can see Moraine was struggling because she was she like, was. okay, so how do I answer this without lying? Again. And the only so thing can she you, do was so say, can you tell me what you were doing? She's like, I, I can't cannot. tell you. Right. And of course, she that looks like I a challenge. Agree. Yeah. It looks like so she was like, saying, hold up. Me. I'm gonna give you one more chance. She was like, first of all, get on your knees. She was like, I'm gonna give you one more chance to tell me what it is I'm asking you. And Moran was just like, I cannot. Oh no, excuse me. What was it? She said something about challenging her, and she was like, You are gonna tell me uh when when you put your lips and your your head to this marble floor. I said, Oh okay she is like really really mad or at least that's what i thought the first time i watched it and Moray was just like i still can't tell you what i was doing and leandrin just sitting there with that smirk i was like i really want to like i know they're all supposed to be like sisters they're on the same side they're working for the same cause i really want to see Wait, 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 wait. What did you just say? The, uh, well, they're you all know, on uh, the same side. They're working for the same cause. Well, not that's not, in, that's not, not necessarily in, true. Okay, let me clarify. <laughs> let me clarify. Not necessarily that they're working for the same cause, because we do know Moraine has like a different agenda. They are supposed to be all watching for whoever the the next dragon may be but i mean that's one of the reasons why leandrin was chasing after the false dragon in the first place because they're trying to you know they're they're trying to make sure that people who aren't supposed to be using the the one power aren't using it so that's what i mean when i say they're kind of on the same side with you know but we already know this that's yeah. different but and, I, and I just, that's they're, they're supposed to be sisters quote unquote I, but I really I really just want to see a showdown between Moraine and Leandrin, and Leandrin and just see how that goes because Leandrin needs her ass whooped that she just what whatever issues you have with Moraine you just need to go on and get it out your system just go on ahead and challenge her y'all fight let Moraine go ahead and, and, and whoop your ass and, and, and let's call it a day. Well, see, Aes Sedai are the servants of the light. Mm-hmm. And they're basically really just supposed to keep everything sort of at peace and keep the kingdoms moving forward. Mm-hmm. That's pretty much all they do. This thing with taking out the male channelers, if a male channeler pops up, they go take care of it. Okay. They're really not supposed to be actively looking for male ah, okay. the reds do it because they're reds <laughs> i was gonna say it seems like leandrin would be the type to be like well i'm just gonna do this anyway i mean we might as well go ahead and just knock you know just knock it out while we're out patrolling or whatever it is that reds yeah. do and, and they were notorious for killing male channelers and not even informing the tower so <laughs> oh. yeah Oh, but okay. we don't we I don't know how far they're going to go into the show with that. But mm-hmm. yeah, the Reds are they, they their heart is in the right place mm-hmm. um, because male channelers are very, very dangerous. Mm-hmm. 
Um, actually, any talent that isn't trained, because one of the things they do is they take in people like Swan when they're young. Remember, okay. her dad sent her off to the tower to teach them, mm-hmm. you know, and okay. train them because they can be dangerous. They're called wilders. They can be dangerous as well. Okay. Okay. But... So, Have we experienced a wilder yet? Um, technically, naive and um. Short answer, yes. Not even okay. Egwene. Egwene, okay. Oh, okay. Because they're they're fairly old. Um, but the way things were in in the two rivers, um, the women's circle, pretty much that's what that's what Nanive was doing with Egwene was basically trying to teach her how to control her powers. Okay. And that was something that they were doing down there that was a little different. Okay. Because some places like where Swan was, if her father had never sent her off to the tower, who knows what she would have done as her powers grew stronger. Yeah, because she wouldn't have, I, I don't think she would have really known how to control that. Right. So, okay. And she okay. didn't have anyone around and probably working with the knots probably helped her control it a lot uh okay but there's some wilders out there who who don't have anyone like that okay okay we're gonna come back to the whole swan moraine and all that stuff going on we're gonna come back to that um so our people from the two rivers have all made it to the tower matt and uh matt and um uh, not Perrin. matt and Rand and, Rand and nynaeve are together and then of course you have uh Egwene and Perrin who came in together now the interesting thing was at the beginning moraine was not telling them that oh yeah they're here you all are here I was like, what is she doing? Why is she keeping them away from each other? Especially since they've been they've been apart for a minute now. It's it's been over a month because when Moraine goes to Rand and Matt to try to, you know, help Matt out, because at this point the darkness from the blade is taking over him. When she asks Rand, she's like, How long has it been like this? And Matt's, I mean, Rand is like, about a month. I was like, wow, okay, but at least they're giving us a timestamp. They're letting us know how much time has passed because, you know, a lot of times we watch shows and we're like, we have no idea if it's been days or weeks or hours or what the case is. But Moraine actually does figure out what it is that's causing the darkness in Matt because when she goes to him, he pulls out the blade and she just happens to be quick. Now, I'm going to tell you, when I was watching this, when he got up on her and she stopped the blade and she pulled it over, that happened so fast. I had to re- I had to rewind it and look at it three times because it happened so fast. Because the first time I thought, I was like, oh, did he step away? Oh, she has the knife. Like, it just, I don't know. It just went by so, so fast. But she looked at the blade. She was like, oh, you stupid boy. I was like, yeah, we've been saying that for a couple of episodes. <laughs> right. Yeah. But she's able to take the darkness out of him and channel it back into the blade. And that was the grossest know, looking thing. <laughs> and and the way seen. it just kind of, it was trying to go in her mouth. And she, yeah. she had her mouth closed. I love the way that they did that mm-hmm. visually. But it's so crazy because when she comes in and she gets ready to go towards Matt, Rand calls him to, oh, you're not going to hurt him. He pulls out a blade, you know, like he's going to attack her. And And Matt is like, oh, sweet boy, he tries. So (laughs) No, what was funny was Lan goes, don't be stupid. (laughs) (laughs) Lan looked at Rand like, don't be stupid. Mm -hmm. Lan has nothing in his hand. Like, don't mm-hmm. be stupid. <laughs> but I guess I can understand Rand's panic because in his mind, especially because they don't really know anything, because before they got separated at Shadow of Lagoth, 
Moray hadn't really told them much. So him saying this darkness in Matt and it getting worse, he probably was thinking, okay, Matt is the dragon. You know, the 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 power is making him crazy as we know it does it, it causes them to lose their mind so he probably thought oh okay well you know what the eyes who die they kill men who channel or you know they they gentle them or whatever so maybe she is gonna harm him so i don't blame him for like trying to protect his friend but he should have known that was not gonna that was not gonna work that was not gonna work out the way he wanted but mm-hmm. it's you know since the beginning, Rand has had this animosity towards Moraine. You know, she took them away from their home and she won't tell them anything. She's given them this information about this destiny and the fact that, you know, they're probably, some, one of them is going to be this big, powerful being that's going to break the world or save the world. Like, like we said a few episodes ago, that's a lot to put on one person's shoulders, especially when they are people who have never left their home before but he's been like dogging her every step of the way even to this point when she's coming to save his friend and then when she goes outside he finally comes to her and he was like thank you I see you know you helped him you took that evil into yourself to help him and it's kind of like duh she's been telling you this whole time that she had no harmful intents for y'all that she was trying to protect y'all. So why wouldn't you think she would do that in this instance? I don't know. I was listening to, um, when I was going back and I I was starting to edit the episodes, I was listening to y'all talk about how how Rand got on y'all nerves or how he was y'all's least favorite character. And I was just- Can't stand his ass still. But I, I, I won't say that I can't stand him, but I do feel like he is a bit of a hothead. And I was like, if he is the dragon, we are in trouble. He's a hothead and he's a you, simp. You don't know. Hothead and a simp. I can't you don't know the half of it. Out. You don't know the half of it. I, I'm sure. I, I'm sure. It's like, I be, I, I basically have, I'm pretty sure if I, if I remember correctly, I can, I already jumped to the conclusion that it was him already. I think, I think I, think I pretty much said have. I'm I'm just like, yeah, it's him. He got he got that Anakin shit going on where it's like if something happens to him, he's gonna be like, ah, ah, and he's gonna be like, nah, he's gonna be all all super saiyan and I'm like, nah, man, nah, I'm not <laughs> man, fuck this dude. Yeah, I just yeah. and and I also know, I need him to we, take it, I need him to take it down a notch. We we also have in this world, there's a extreme high level of distrust of Aes Sedai. So mm-hmm. they can tell you something. Everybody knows I said I can't lie. And that makes it worse because you know they're being deceitful. Whatever they tell you, you know that they're not going to lie to you, but you can't believe anything they say to you. Right, because they can't lie to you, but that does not mean they have to tell you the truth. Exactly. exactly. And nobody, nobody, hardly anyone trusts I said I, mm. um, especially the common people. Okay. You know, because it's it, it, it's like how people are with the Jedi in Star Wars. Mm-hmm. It's like they come and they take your children <laughs> from you. Yeah, but I mean, even even Sawan says something about that when Leandrin was when she was questioning them about um, them gentling the fake uh, the false dragon, and Leandrin says something about he was dangerous, he was too powerful. And she says, um, she says, our laws are not in place to protect us, our, you know, our uh, wants and our desires. Our laws are in place to protect our people from us, you know? And I was just like, oh, okay. But yeah, it's like you created laws to protect the people from you. I, I, felt like i was like oh okay so y'all had to do that i guess in in a way to kind of save face with your people because people are probably pointing at them like yeah y'all could wipe us all out if y'all wanted to so why should we trust you and you yeah it's just i don't know i guess i feel like with the eyes to die like obviously for the most part that's not that's 
let's take the reds out of it because I don't know what the reds are doing off on their own but I feel like what we have seen so far of the Aes Sedai has been that they are helping people like think about it when the Trollocs invaded the two rivers Moraine didn't have to help them she could have just taken the four of them and just been like okay let's go she really could have I mean she almost died protecting them so I guess I I guess my question is what was done that caused people to not trust the Aes Sedai so much the, you know? the Aes Sedai broke the world Mm. All that devastation, all that destruction, all that upheaval. Mm -hmm. That was I said I did that. Ah. They were men, but and they were men that could channel, but okay. I said I they were I said I at that time men and women were I said I. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. And all they know is that I said I went crazy and broke the world. But but what I'm saying is and no one there's, and, no, there's no been nothing. Them. There's been nothing that happened in the 3,000 years since to make you say, oh, okay, thank you. Thank you. you know, random men who could channel were, were causing problems because mm. it was over uh, over a certain amount of time, but yeah. Mm -hmm. No, they, they don't, and there's a, it's like the genetic memory <laughs> that gets passed down. Oh, yeah, that, okay. There's just a natural distrust for eyes to die because is their fault that the world was broken and that mm. story keeps getting told okay over and over and so over it's again. like even no matter what good they're doing now people are still going to remember oh but y'all were the ones that broke the world yeah if if but they don't really it's hard to say if they don't really do good mm -hmm. <laughs> you know they're not like this merciful you know red cross organization that goes around helping everybody no they try to marry their eyes they take princes princesses who mm -hmm. can channel so when they become queens they actually work for the eyes to die no they're 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 very manipulative and i guess that, and people guess are right to one. be distrustful of them because okay. no one really knows what their goal is their okay. goal and is guess, to maintain peace and i guess that that kind of that kind of makes sense because what i was going to say was the reason why I have so many questions or I'm saying so many things that are not necessarily true about the Aes Sedai is because we really, up till this point, haven't really been told what the Aes Sedai do. You know, mm -hmm. it's just kind of like we're, we're given these clues by watching how they interact with other people and how they interact with each other. And we can kind of guess, okay, well, these are the the quote-unquote good Aes Sedai and these are the ones that are kind of questionable and I'm talking about the Reds just because they yeah yeah but we don't really like we have not really been told these are the Aes Sedai this is their purpose this is what they do in the world it's kind of like we're left to figure it out unless we listen to the things that Valda said, because Valda has been very vocal about what he thinks the Aes Sedai are and how and why he thinks they're evil, or why he thinks they need to be eradicated. So I I don't know. I guess I guess that means I'm just gonna have to read the books. But I know you said that a lot of what's in the show is not in the books, but it would at least, I guess, give me a little bit more background mm -hmm. into the workings of the Aes Sedai and what they're supposed to be. And then I can kind of, I guess, go back and look at everything and be like, oh, okay, so that makes sense now. That makes sense now. But, okay. I guess I'm going to have to read these thick-ass books. Oh, <laughs> like not, I have the time for that. They're, oh, not, well. they're, not, they're not that big. Don't even lie. I... <laughs> I bought, I found the la I found books uh 10, 11, and 12 in the oh, Goodwill. Wow. Those are big. Yeah, they're huge. A memory of light. Yeah. Yes. They're huge. Crossroads of Crossroads something. of Twilight. Yep. Yeah. And Knife of Dreams. Uh -uh, they're big. That was supposed to be one book. 
Oh, I have that. Those two and the Gathering Storm. Those are the ones that I have. Yeah. Those are huge. They're yeah. huge. Yeah, I think they're the biggest ones of of the set. Of the series. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um. So anyway, like I said, she's she's found Matt and Rand. She's pulled the darkness out of Matt, and she's telling Rand about um just basically about Matt also having darkness in him. And she was like, look. The darkness from the blade was feeding off of him as much as he was feeding off of it. You have to be careful. You have to really watch him because if he gets that darkness in him again, he may be lost to us. And then, of course, at this point, Nynaeve comes in. And she's just like, oh, Moraine, of course, blah, blah, blah. And Moraine was like, uh, so why didn't you come? Uh, why didn't you send for me as soon as you guys got here? You know? Um, she was like, you could, he could have been, Matt could be so far more gone, you know, if, if Moraine hadn't gotten there and she told Nani, she was like, if you, if you just, uh, what did she say? If you call yourself a wisdom, you better start showing us. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> cause Rand and the builder and Nani, once she said that they were just all kind of looking, Rand was looking, standing and looking like, <laughs> like nobody wanted to look at her she just walks in the room like she's upset that poor child and then she finds out that um Egwene and Perrin are there and Egwene kind of gives her a rundown of what they've experienced Perrin is on the bed he's laying on the bed and he does not look to be in good shape at all but you know he had a rough time of it because Valda um tortured him and mm -hmm. you know was yeah cutting him open and all this other stuff and so Egwene tells Moraine about you know Perrin's eyes glowing golden and you know about the wolves and stuff and Moraine is like look don't you tell anybody about this shit because they may all come for him commoners and Aes Sedai alike so I was like I still want to know for sure and I know we've had this we had this conversation when we discussed the first couple of episodes that he may be a werewolf and i don't know if again i i can't remember our discussion i don't remember if werewolves exist in that sense in this world but he's a wolf man is. jack i promise you he is but whatever he is um yeah it's 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 gonna be difficult for him i can say confidently that there are no werewolves in this world yeah, but you might be lying to us. <laughs> I'm saying you you just like a, you, I mean you like your own eyes to die. It's like you're giving all these coded answers. I'm like, no. wait, hold on. In I this just... world, oh god, there are no werewolves. He said in this See? world. Uh-huh. Okay. It's, it's okay. like it's, I feel I feel like I need a whiteboard to like Wait, hold on. I have a whiteboard right here. Hold on. I, let me let me write down <laughs> what you just said. Let's see. <laughs> So there's not one here, but there's hmm, they carry the one minus two. You know what? I'm just that is too funny. Too funny. So anyway, so after Moraine has seen Perrin, has seen Matt and all them, Leandrin once again put on her nose where it does not belong. Moraine and Lan are walking through the hall and Leandrin comes up to her. She was like, so is that one of the boys, Matt Cawthon? Is that his name? And they're looking like the audacity of this bitch. And um, she basically is like giving Moraine all of this information, just basically confirming that she has a spy and they're passing her, her information. So she was like, it's a strange thing his other friend what is his name Rand that they just happen to be from the two rivers along with the two strangers who are being nursed back to health by our yellow sisters and Miranda sitting here looking like and then she's like oh are they all friends of Nynaeve hmm let's let's go tell the Amerlin about that connection and Moraine starts storming up to her I thought Moraine was about to slap her I was like, oh, we about to see a fight. I'm sitting there getting excited in my seat. But no, what Moraine does is so much better. She just walks up to her and she says, 
I know about the man you meet in North Harbor. And the look on Leandra's face was like, yes. And Mariah was like, walk away. Never mention this again. Or I will tell your mm-hmm. red sisters where he lives. And Leandrin looks like she is about to, I don't know if she's about to explode or she's about to cry. Because Mariah is like, and we'll, we both know what they'll do to him. She's looking so scared. I was like, look, Mariah is basically telling you I'm not that bitch. Don't try me. <laughs> right. And it was so it was so satisfying to see her do that because Leandra had it coming. She had it coming. She had it coming. She had it coming. coming. (laughs) But I was just like, okay, so please tell me that she's just, she's going to leave Moraine alone from this point on. Probably not, but I'm just just saying. She's a, no, Lorraine, she is a habitual line stepper. Like she's going, she's going to step again. It's going to happen. Man, let me tell you. She just, like I said, when she, when Moray started walking up to her, I thought she was about to deck her. But I don't know that that would work out well in her favor, considering she's already, uh, she's already supposed to be punished. And we still don't know where her punishment is. So I, I, I don't think fighting another sister in the tower would be beneficial to her. But. You never know. I mean, you, you never know till you try. All you gotta do is smack her once to see what happens. I mean, you know <laughs> just just one good, <laughs> just knock her down step, knock her down some steps or something. Yeah. But um, Moraine is about to introduce Egwene to the Amelin seat, and she's you know she's they're in the white room. And she's giving her a little background about the um about the the room i guess and um i like that she finally did reunite the uh Egwene and Nynaeve because it won Egwene wasn't expecting it so it was very emotional for her and then two it's kind of like okay i feel like yes i feel like in a way this was a little bit maybe manipulative on Moraine's part but I that, was like, that was 100% also, manipulation. That was, that was 100%. 100%. But I, think some of it, I think some of it too was to kind of maybe build some trust from the, the two rivers people. Like, okay, look, I can be trusted. Y'all can trust me. Look, I'm I'm giving you this. No, she, she kept them separated. No, she's manipulating them because she's, she's already keeping um, Perrin and Egwene separate from the other ones. She didn't even tell them that they were there. When she saw Perrin and Egwene, she said, I have a feeling they're safe. She's like, mm-hmm. I haven't seen them, but trust me, I believe that they're going to be safe. But she but yeah. she didn't say, she didn't say, yeah, they're over there because she knew that they were gonna probably go over there and like get together again. And she wants and she's like planning and plotting stuff. She she's being manipulative. Yeah, she, kinda... she doesn't she doesn't want them to get together. And Nynaeve has this wonderful idea of we're gonna we're done. We're gonna go back to the two rivers. We're good. Yeah. That's what I, I, I was gonna say. I don't know if I I okay, so yes, I do feel like Moraine is being manipulative, but I also feel like especially seeing what we just saw with Leandrin, I think she's trying not to put all her eggs in one basket. You know, okay. and I'm I mean, unfortunately with Leandrin, it didn't matter because she's like, Oh yeah, you got these people over here, you got these people over here. I don't know. Maybe she's just. She could be being over overly cautious. No, she wants no. to make sure that when it, when she keeping them separate, so mm. she can take care of what she needs to take care of, because when she brings them together, she's going to be ready to go. Yeah. See, if she brings them together too early, they may leave That's without she, her uh, and go yeah. back. Yeah. Okay. Because she she already she already knows that she's getting ready to get excommunicated. Like she's like. Ain't sure I can do about it because I got I got to save the Amaranth seat from being involved in any of this shit. Mm-hmm. So I have to sacrifice myself. So I don't well, need... know. She she didn't want to be stuck in the tower. That's what her boss told her. You got yeah. Stay her here. boss was like, "We need you in the tower permanently." And you should have seen it's it's almost like her. What was no, it? That, yeah. um, what was it that Swan told her when 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 your shackles 
go back in i mean when she said permanently mariah was like excuse like no that that was like a i I feel like that would be like a death sentence for her to have to stay in one place i mean granted well it messes up their plan it messes up the plan that she needs to find the dragon and take him to the eye of the world no, and yeah. I understand that, but I feel like he, I, I feel like with the way Moraine has been traveling, like they said, she's been in and out of the tower for twenty years now. You telling her she can't leave the tower? She has to. She has to stay in the city. I don't think that. I don't think Moraine would be able to do that now, even if she oh. didn't have that other mission or that other. You know, I I just don't think she'd be able to do it. Yeah, she yeah, she has too much wanderlust in her. It's like she can't she can't stay in one place. It's like that's not in her nature. Mm-hmm. Like she has to be out there. You're right. I agree with that. Mm-hmm. I just like, mm-hmm. but it's like, but she just, it's like you want to like Moraine, but it's like I always have. I, I seem to have this nagging sense in the back of my head that she can't be trusted. Like, like there's something with her that I'm just like, eh. who is the one? No, Moraine. Oh, Moraine. Like, okay. I'm just like it's, it's just something something about her. It's like I know she's she's not the main. She's not she's not like a typical villain per se, but I mm-hmm. feel like she has like ulterior. Everything she does seems like she has ulterior motives, and it's like she's trying to get something get something done that she doesn't want to tell anybody about. Anthony's and over does. here trying not to smile. <laughs> she I, know, does. I know. I know. Yeah, I know. It's you're fellow, it, she, she just, does. Oh, she, I, I every, know. I know. I know. I know. Everything Man. she does has an ulterior motive. I know, the, but it's like that's, that's why point. I can't really trust her. That's why I'm fearful for like the treacherous five. Like I'm like she's gonna do some bullshit. As a general, as a general rule, you should not trust I said I. Just as okay, a general yeah. rule, you should. I'm kind of getting that. Noted. <laughs> But let me tell you, when Egwene and Nynaeve are brought before the ambulance seat, Nynaeve is... Let me Nynaeve say, ain't having it. She's like... Spitfire yeah, I'm, that I'm one. Ready, I'm ready to go home. Like, get, like, like yeah, I'm so happy to see you. Yeah, whatever. I'm ready to go. She's like, but... She's like, I don't, care, I don't care about you. I don't care about what y'all doing. I'm taking my friends. We're going back home. But, right. I mean... If you really think about it, or if Nynaeve thinks about it, especially, I can't remember how much she's been told about what's going on. If they go back home, the Trollocs are going to follow them. They're not going to be safe. Their 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 friends are not going to be safe. Their families are not going to be safe. They really don't have much choice. They don't. Don't have any choice because I mean, I mean, beyond that, their their home is destroyed. Yeah. Well, the, like, the Trollocs went there for them, right? And and so and ran through their vill- ran through their village like it was nothing, and it's like, like nothing. Yeah, nothing. they can't they can't go back because the Trollocs will just go back, Mm-mm. right? And so they, and just like the Amelin Seed is telling Nynaeve, she was like, the will doesn't care about any of this stuff. They don't care if you want to go home. They don't care if you're being petty week they don't it, it it does not care what you want you have been called to this like y'all were given these powers for a specific reason yeah and the saying is the will weaves as the will wills mm. so mm. it's gonna do what it does that's a tongue twister we wow we go out we, 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 <laughs> we, we, we. all right cool whatever you say but the Amelin seat, she has an abundance of patience because when I said Nynaeve, like I understand Nynaeve is, she's tired of all this. She's like, look, we are way far from home. I have been attacked by Trollocs. We have done this. We have done that. Look, I just, I just want to go home. But the amount of, I love Nynaeve's character. I really do. But she she got a disrespectful ass mouth on her. <laughs> she she does. No reason. Yeah, people I think... are are being polite to them. You just stop being so nasty. 
No, I mean, because she, from all she's seen and everything she's gone through, she's not trusting anybody. She ain't trying to see nobody. She's like, look, I got, I just, something just happened with me. I have no idea what the fuck happened. Like, you don't have I, to trust were dead. everybody to to just be polite. You know. Well, pl- it, well plus, I mean, think think about it like this. It's like she just she just displayed like power that nobody thought she had and it's mm-hmm. like she kind of she might feel like she has the upper hand like because they're like well you're not gonna do anything to me because you know i got the i'm because i'm i have i have something that you are interested in mm-hmm. me my power so it's like mm-hmm. like what you gonna do i want to go home so i'm gonna go home so it's like i mean she's not gonna change who she is because she because she's like why should i you like you can't do shit to me. It's like if I want to go home, I'm gonna go home. But then it's like, oh, fucking soon. Like she just like I, I love how she just like as soon as she started mouthing off, she just got up and calmly walked over to her. Didn't raise her voice. Was just like, oh, look. Like you are not the first person to find yourself in circumstances you don't want to be in. When she got up, I was like, oh shit, she about to bust it in the face. Like, hold on, what's what's going on? Because the way she uncrossed her legs and put her feet down and got like, like I was like, oh shit. <laughs> we've we've all seen that before. <laughs> right. I was like, oh I was like, no, no. Like, oh shit, that's not my mom. Never mind. Okay, carry on. <laughs> carry on. Right. Okay, so let let's go to Moraine's um passing of her judgment. First of all, why we couldn't see what what punishment was given to Leandrin? I wanted to see that. I need to see what they did to her because like I said, I feel like she was way more disrespectful to the Amelin seat than Moraine was. She was she was disrespectful, she was defiant. I want to see what her punishment was. I want to, anyway. So Moraine gets in front of the ambulance seat. And as we said, mentioned earlier, when they had their um, tryst, whatever, when they, when they got together, Moraine told Suwan she would have to exile her because other than that, she was ordered to stay in the tower permanently and she won't be able to do what they need to do oh also during that conversation this is when she notifies Swan about the fact that she found five potential uh candidates for the dragon in the same village although Nynaeve Nynaeve is a bit older yeah Yeah. she's she's older than them but you can't discount the power that she has what were they saying about um I think Sawan said something about, or Moraine said something about there was a prophecy in one of the other towns about a many-headed dragon. Mm -hmm. So I think she was was, 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 was trying to say that, you know, maybe this prophecy is wrong. I mean, it's like, she's just, she's saying maybe it's a rumor, just like everything else that I've heard. It's like, I've heard there's a many-headed dragon over there. I've heard there's a that there that is gender fluid i've heard that is polka dot with blue stripes it's like i hear i hear a lot of things how do we know that this is right and she's but just I like i feel like did and i don't want to get spoilery anthony so if this is spoilery don't answer it but the fact that they specifically mentioned a many headed dragon is there and, and you know Sawan follows that up with um, why would the wheel split the dragon's soul into sep- you know into many pieces? Is that something that potentially could happen? Like, could could it be that all of them have a part of the dragon and it'll okay? So that so the whole thing about it no okay this direction okay that's what I was wondering what? Because, because I was like that because... would be kind of convenient if. You have all these five people who grew up in the same town, who are all very close friends, who all love each other. It end up being one of these things where, you know, it's like they're the Voltron of <laughs> no, <laughs> of the a world. Like, like they have to all okay, be they're the planeteers. 
Right, like, like they have your powers to bind. I am Canada the dragon. Was, yeah. Yeah. So no, okay, so so no, that's not it. Because remember, in that same conversation, she talked about how well these prophecies have been translated for three thousand right. years. Mm -hmm. Some of them have been, you know, shifted, changed, mm -hmm. rewritten. Mistakes were made. Mm -hmm. So you know, it's a lot basically of stuff, they they've been playing telephone for the last three thousand years. Yeah. Right. Right. So, so the only solid prophecy they have is one that they heard which really wasn't a prophecy. It was just a vision of the dragon was being born right then. Okay. On the mountain, you know, okay. that, and, and then they went out and tried to track down all of the different prophecies okay. to try to figure out where the dragon was. Okay. That's okay. why it's been so difficult is because they have to parse all these different translations of any of the prophecies. Okay. And this is not spoilery, but it, it there is a possibility that this isn't the first time that the dragon has been reborn mm, because okay. over the 3000 years they automatically kill men who could channel so it's possible that he has the, the whole point of the will is reincarnation mm -hmm. and a lot of people have been especially the dragon has has finally been reincarnated again mm -hmm. and this is the best time and all the pieces are starting to fall into place for okay. this particular dragon. Okay. Loghain was a false dragon. He has a role to play, but he 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 was not meant to be the dragon. Okay. Okay. And, you know, I just sat here and realized that there's going to be a whole generation or like a, a specific generation of listeners who are not going to get that telephone joke I told. <laughs> well, rumor they'll know rumor yeah yeah but not telephone yeah there's yeah. so many names for that game it's like was it like whisper or pass it on i don't know i've I've only ever heard like telephone it's like or you telegraph. tell one person one you know, thing you know they won't they, they won't know somebody. telegraph you go telegraph they're like what the huh they're gonna be like what is that <laughs> So you were about to talk about her banishing her and she made her swear on the oath rod. Yes. So the oath rod is a thing that the Aes I use for when they make their oaths. They swear mm -hmm. their oaths. And the oaths are unbreakable. The oath rod, there are three types of magical items. I think I mentioned this in an earlier podcast. They're Angrial, Sangrial, and Tirangrial. The Angrial amplify your powers so those who could channel can store their power and amplify their power using it the sangrial which are more rare mm -hmm. are like a hundred times mm -hmm. better than the other one now terangrial which is what the oath rod is are items that are powered by the one power okay so this is the second item we've seen in this show that is a Tyrion Grial. Okay. You remember what the other one was? The portrait in the, oh, oh, in the wall. Okay. Got you. So okay. she used the one power to channel and to activate it. Okay. To go, okay. which there's a there's a dream world mm. in the book called Tyrion Riad, which I'm not. And you can get there either through dreams or through, re you can really go there for okay. real. And I think that's where they are going. It's, it's a dream world called Tell Around Riyadh. Okay. And, and that way, no one would know that they're meeting and no one would ever find them because they're, they're there. But anyway, that though, that's what Oath Rod is. Now, here's a bit of another side note Oath Rods, because, you know, 3,000 years ago, things were different. Mm -hmm. The original purpose of the oath rod was for prisoners. People who could channel, who did terrible things, were forced to swear that they would never use the one power again. Mm -hmm. And this was how they were called binders. They weren't called oath rods. So they were actually punishment tools. They weren't meant to... Oh, swear an oath to this, and you won't break this up. No, it was it was for punishment. What would happen if they actually, like, say, you took an oath not to use their powers? What would happen if they did? 
if they took us both on the oath ride. They they couldn't. There isn't a once it's like you, an unbreakable curse. This is yeah. You can't do okay. it. Okay. Just like how I, I, thought, I thought like they would die. Like they, like it would they would die or something, or like something would no, happen you, to them if they you, tried you, to. You just can't. Okay. You can't even try. Yeah. You can try or, and nothing will happen. But I okay. I think I wonder if it's also the way that they, they word the oath because just like here in this scene when the ambulance seat tells Moraine what to repeat after her, she does say, um, you know, I I I pledge to abide by the judgment of the ambulance seat and not return or or the create, you know, or the creator will uh turn his face from me and darkness will consume my soul. So I'm assuming it would be something similar like that. Like if Moraine were to try to come back, then she would probably lose her access to the one power. And then, you know, the darkness would consume her soul. But I find it interesting that, again, what is it that we say? Words matter. Because when they're doing the oath, Sawan says, you know, I agree to abide by the judgment of the Amaralyn seat. When Moraine repeats it, she repeats everything except that she says, I agree to abide by the judgment of Sawan Sanche, mm -hmm. daughter of the river, clever, clever as, a, as pike. a pike. Right. And she says the same thing that Sawan's father said to her when she left the tear. Now that again, this scene here gave me more insight into their relationship than the earlier scene because for Moraine to know that information, that means Suwan would have had to have trusted her with that kind of information. That's not something that you just randomly go around telling somebody about your last moments with your father and right. those things that he said. So the way that she is saying this and, and repeating it back to her, First of all, I bet you Sawan was sitting here like, bitch, you trying to make me cry in front of everybody? Like you really about to, you you really trying to, trying to expose everything? Because I felt like that's what that was. It was one of those where she was basically in a sense, I feel like declaring her feelings without declaring her feelings. But at the same time, she's saying, I won't come back until Sawan Sanche tells me to come back, not the right. Amarillin seat. Because if Sawan Sanche ends up being overthrown or she gets voted off or however it is that they choose the Amarillin seat, if she would have said those words, then whoever was the Amarillin seat next, they would have to be the ones to grant Moraine permission to come back. So I thought about that. I was like, oh, that's very clever. That was very clever. So and that's, that was very savvy of you to notice that too, that she, that she did that. Because it, with the oath rod, the words matter. Mm -hmm. And in their minds, the Armelin seat is a position. Mm -hmm. The Armelin seat, once you become the Armelin seat, you're no longer who you were before. Mm-hmm. And so it's very important that she swore that oath to Swan and not the Armin seat is because it's two different things. Right. It's like how we talk yeah. about the office of the president is not the same as the person who is the president. Mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. Am I the only one who thought that 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 the uh, that oath almost sounded like wedding vows to me? It 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 was it was definitely a binding vow. You know, it's like I because mean, I mean, it's kind of like it kind of like seeing, especially the way they held it. Then you see, you see her power coming through and going into the rod, then going through the rod to Moraine and winding around her. It's almost like like a ribbon ceremony in a wedding where they get the ribbon and they tie tie the tie they tie the bride and groom's hand together and say you're united now as one and blah 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 blah. See, yeah, I, didn't, I didn't think but, that I literally saw that and I was like oh it's the unbreakable vow from Harry Potter oh well, of course <laughs> it's usually the same thing mm -hmm. <laughs> so you know and I mean even even with that scene when they were doing the unbreakable vow there was an instant where 
somebody was repeating a vow and Snape kind of, he kind of twisted the words just a little bit so that it, he wasn't bound to do something he didn't want to do, but something that he had to do, you know what I'm saying? So mm-hmm. it, it's, it's similar to the same thing, but anyway, so the way that this works is after they do this vow, Sawan tells Moraine to face her sisters. And when she faces her sisters, they all turn their backs on her. So basically she's being like exiled, excommunicated, like they do not acknowledge her. And when she walks out the doors and they open the doors, this is the same thing. All of the, um, all of the Aes Sedai outside of the chamber, they also do the same thing. Leandrin looks pleased, but also scared because I think that threat is still in her mind. She's like, oh, wait, Moraine just got exiled. So, huh, I might need to be worried. Alana is the only one who looks so sad. Like she actually looks at Moraine before she turns around and she turns she has this look on her face like i don't want to do this and then she has to turn around and that's basically how moraine leaves the tower I, i'm sorry I, by all her sisters if it was if i was one of them i'd be like this ain't no punishment she ain't been here for 20 years anyway she come in and out whenever she she was gone she's been gone for two years and hadn't come back and but so still, I'm like, this ain't no real punishment. There's something about, I, I guess you can kind of liken it to a, a child who leaves home. Like I have three children. They have all, since they turned 18, they've all been in and out of my house for, for whatever reason. Like my younger daughter, she left and went to college. She was out of state for five years and She's back with me now temporarily just because her lease ended early. She's getting ready to try to move somewhere else. So it's like one of those things where, okay, if you have to come back, at least you know that there's a place for you to come back. But if you have a parent who tells you, okay, once you turn 18, you can't come back to my house ever. There's a difference between that. You know, it's that security of knowing that no matter what you do, you still have a place to lay your head when and if need be. But for you to be told that you can never return to that place again, and not just the tower, she has to leave Tarvalon, right? She can't stay in the city. Well, so, what, would be the, what would be the point of staying in the city if you can't be in the tower? So. Yeah, but but I'm saying at least at Tarvalon, she could be like, oh, okay, well, let me go rent this room. And but, but I, no, I don't like, think the oath said anything about Tarvalon. Mm. I think it was just a tower. Okay. Okay. But anyway, so she leaves, she gets on her horse, she goes out into a field, and reunion time. Everybody gets to meet back up. So you have Perrin and Egwene. They get to reunite with Matt and Rand and Nynaeve. And it's just all happy for like two seconds. <laughs> just two seconds. Because this, this little structure where they're getting ready to meet, I was like, something doesn't look right about this. It It's basically some stairs with two pillars on the side. I was like, oh, that's a doorway somewhere. That can't be good. That can't be good. So it is, it's so it's they call it's called a way gate. So a way gate, yes. A way gate, yes. That's right. So like I said, you have um you have all of our two rivers people who are reuniting which is so happy because they know that they're all alive and blah 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 but this is where moraine tells them okay you know what we really don't have a lot of time so let me tell you what the deal is and what we're about to do and talk about 
laying it on thick for someone and then not really giving them time to react because she's like, okay, so basically this is what's going to happen. One of you four may, may be the dragon. You're going to meet the dark one at the eye of the world. But the problem is that only one of you will survive this if we continue to go forward. If this is what you want to do, if you want to figure out if you're the dragon, whatever, whatever, we need all of you, but only one of you will survive. Now let's go into this, right. into this way gate that's going to lead you into a different, uh, what is it, a different dimension, a different what? whatever come on let's go let's walk towards your deaths <laughs> they send the horses away and you know all of the people all of our people are looking like well why are y'all sending the horses away and loyal the builder he says because they would not survive the journey they're looking like what so so what is this what is this journey what, what are we doing where are we going And that's when they're telling them about the ways. And I think one of the things I said is one step in the ways could be a hundred miles in our world. And Loyal is about to go into like more detail and Moraine is like, nope. Okay. So basically this is what we're doing. The ways is the way that we get to the eye of the world, the dark one's prison. And she was like, we have to go there. One of you is going to have to finish the job that you started in your previous life. And then when Rand says, but we don't know who the dragon is. And Moraine says, when we left the two rivers, I told you nothing because I couldn't trust you. But now I know you and um, let me speak clearly. So this is what we're going to do. She's like, if we turn back here, if we don't stop the dark one now while he is weak, the whole world will turn to dark. Armies of Trollocs and Fades, a million strong, will wash across the land, killing and eating every person they find. She said, what they did to your village is nothing compared to what they will do. The earth itself will burn. And all of them are looking around like Perrin is looking down and Matt is looking around like, this is what, this is what we're expecting to deal with. What did she say? When a new new age comes, it will be built upon the ashes of the places and people we love. No pressure, guys. So and, and she didn't tell what, them the part about whoever comes between the dragon and the dark one will die. Yeah, that's what I was because uh, Egwene just says so. So when they change the character, because you know the actor is leaving and they're bringing in a new man. Right, right. So maybe they may be a difference in the characterization. Like maybe he'll be a little bit more lighthearted. But like okay. this man, I only see him going back to the two rivers to check on his sisters. Like I don't know. It, and it's and weird. I and see that's the thing. That's that's why. I really don't understand his decision because you know if you do that the Trollocs are gonna come find you I mean maybe they won't since the darkness got pulled out of him maybe that might be a a fundamental difference in him now and he can go back to the two rivers safely and not no but but then because because the dark one the dark one knows that the dragon has been reborn and now he knows that it's one of these people so he's going to hunt all of them down and kill them so it's not going to matter where matt goes right so it's basically a stupid move because he's on his own now he doesn't have anybody to back him up so it's like if he goes somewhere if he if he goes to find his sisters he's putting his he's putting everybody around him in danger because if they're coming to kill him they're going to go through anything to kill him because he yeah. might be the dragon. And so not only like that, he's... you have to go back to the two rivers and explain to Rand's father and Egwene's parents that oh yeah I I kind of left them behind or they left me behind or. I, they're going to face danger and I didn't go with you got to go back and basically tell those people that you were a coward because that I mean right now again I understand why you don't want to go through but the rest of your friends went through and you and you didn't go with them I feel like that was a cowardly move so mm-hmm. yeah um hey is, is his look like serendipitous look 
or is it just like basic look? Like, is it like Forrest Gump look? Like he happens to be in the same place, the right place at the right time? All of it. Okay. All of it. There's gotcha. Campbell's look. There's I'm in the right place at the right time. They stumble across something and it just happens to be something that he needs. Yeah. Mm. And okay. Perrin is the same way and Rand's, his is off the charts. Gotcha. Rand okay. is like, you know how we talk about Scarlet Witch can change the probability of things? Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's, that's Rand in the book. Oh, oh, did oh. I give it away? Just oh, no. Say, oh, Ruffin is absolutely the dragon. Yeah, there no. you go. No, I was talking about them being Taviran. That as a Taviran, he's, okay. he's the strongest Taviran of them. Explain again what a Taviran is. In the simplest terms, it's just being extremely fortuitous, very lucky okay. in your decisions and the things that you do. Okay. Okay. And and it could be from gambling in Matt's thing to um as a general moving your soldiers to the right place at the right time. Mm. Mm. Okay. It, it 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 ranges that far. Well, they're gonna need some of that kind of look going into the cavern that they just went into. Cause if you look at the previews for the next episode, I was like, oh, this looks familiar. It almost looks like when the fellowship went into the mines of Moria and they were trying to get across. I was like, oh. And, oh. and in the book, Matt Perrin and Rand, and I guess you could say Egwene and Nynaeve in the show, they don't do this, but the Taviran can feel each other. Like the stronger you are, they can, they kind of know where you, like there were we, times when- We had a when, discussion about yeah, that at the beginning. There was very times beginning. when Matt could be like, I need to go, I need to go find, I need to go find Perrin or I need to go find Rand. Mm-hmm. Or Perrin was like, I need, I, I feel like this need to go find Rand right now. Like I kind of know which direction he's in. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? They uh-huh. they have that like I know Rand needs me, or Rand is yeah. like Rand is in trouble. That that's something that to especially because it's the three of them and they're so powerful that they could feel that with each other. Yeah, I think we talked about that in the, uh, either the first or the second episode because when you mentioned that you know, I was kind of wondering if maybe that's why they ended up being best friends because they were automatically drawn to each other, you know, throughout their whole lives. Mm -hmm. But also I feel like that's one of the reasons why they all ended up at the tower. Because if you remember, Perrin didn't want to go to the tower or rather was it, was it Egwene that didn't want to go? And then Matt was like, oh, Egwene's not going to go to the tower. You need to go back. You know, it was like, Half of them were talking about, oh, well, they would all go to the tower because that's where we were going to go. And the other ones were like, no, we're not going to go. And it just, I I don't know, something about the way they all just kind of, well, maybe not all because Rand and um, Matt did come across a little bit of danger, but the way they basically all got to Tarvalon unscathed Mm -hmm. for the most part, you know, Matt's darkness possession you know notwithstanding notwithstanding but still, yeah, yeah it's, it's kind of like i feel like that's where they're drawn to each other but also that's probably why moraine was able to feel them and come to that place because even when lan asked her so which one is it she was like i don't know because you're getting these powerful vibes from all of them it's kind of like yeah let's just nah, take them not not necessarily Hers was a lot of logic and deduction and reasoning. Because so remember, you don't think the they, they so can the one power can't the being a Taverian and mm-hmm. having access to the one power is two separate things. Yeah, but I I guess I just figure mm-hmm. with Moraine having access to the one power, maybe that gave her the ability to seek out, I guess, other forms of I don't know magic or whatever the case may be, no. but, but that's not the case. Okay. That's not the case. She she did they did a, she did a lot of research, and and eventually found her way to what used to be Manethrin, was a mm-hmm. large kingdom, and that's mm-hmm, where the mm-hmm. two rivers are. 
so she she went there and looked at birth records because birth records are reported <laughs> for some strange reason in this world mm-hmm. and she was like hmm, all these these three boys were all born like right around the time when the dragon would have been born mm. that's why she went there to investigate who okay. those three boys were okay and that's that's how she ended up there because and in and, and especially if you start hearing the stories about some people like you know if a traveling merchant always talks about how he lost money to this kid every time right. he went there like mm-hmm. this kid's uncanny luck in gambling right. then she might be like hmm that sounds like he might be a taverin mm, okay let me go there oh wait there's like oh and there's a kid over there he's got red hair <laughs> but no one else here has red hair right that's interesting he was also born around the same time okay you know oh that kid over there he's huge hmm he doesn't fit in here either so <laughs> you know she starts you start putting all the okay. pieces together and the other thing about Taverin is we talk about the will weaves and the will wills mm-hmm. Taverin have the ability to bend the will to their needs whether oh. they they can't do it consciously but that's where the, that's what we call luck oh, okay. so okay. things that may seem random may not necessarily have been random on a conscious level oh like, okay okay uh, matt always winning in dice because he's subconsciously forcing the will to allow him to win every time that's interesting yeah. So and that and that has nothing to do with the one and it has nothing to do with the one power because one of the strongest Taverns in, in the history of this universe, he wasn't a channeler. Huh. He was he was a very successful general who who basically conquered all all of the land. Anthony, what so. makes you think I had time to go and read these books? Because that's what you're making like, me want to do now. There's like 14 books. I know. Oh <laughs> that's still that. Damn, I'm tired just but thinking about reading all that. Oh, I'm going to have to yeah. start. Uh, okay. Because that's a lot of information that we haven't gotten in the first season. I mean, granted, yeah, which is a lot of it, stuff that 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 i i don't know if they ever will because it mm-hmm. seems like the showrunners are intent on making this show more i don't want to use the word original but we've talked about this before it's an adaptation but it's not really because they're making it do, their own thing they're making it their own thing 85 percent of it is not in the book and so therefore it's not really the book okay Damn. Okay, and we, and I know this is foreshadowing, but I I really don't want to know what they did with the Eye of the World because I'm just I'm just not looking forward to that. Mm. You think they're gonna mess it up? I know they messed it up. Mm. <laughs> <sighs> okay, they got about five percent of it right. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. We'll see. I'll take your word for it. Um, did we get everything? Did we talk about everything? I think we did. I want to give a shot. Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. Before we go, we got to go back to the title for a minute. The doggone, um, I don't know what she was because she wasn't dressed in any of the, I don't think she was dressed in any of the traditional colors, but the chick with the staff in the room oh. what was her problem oh my god she's the parliamentarian she was like she she's the one the one that got ordered to everything like when they when leandra started started getting out of control she was just like bong or when when what when the false dragon started mouthing off she was like hey shut the fuck up with the way she was looking at everybody she looked like i don't want none of y'all here that's the, because she has to have she has to have that attitude if she's gonna keep order. It's like I she can't guess. be like, oh now calm down. She gotta be like, hey, shut the fuck up. I guess she did her job well, though. I will say that. Yeah, I will um, say that. I want to give I want to give it a shout, shout out to to my boy Loyal. Like 
I love this character. I don't, for some reason, I don't even know that much about him, but I love him. Like, I just like how he looks. I like, I like the fact yeah. that he has, he has really big prosthetic hands and they don't act like they're big prosthetic hands, but his hands, but his hands are like this big, <laughs> like this way, this big. I'm like, mm-hmm. and he look, and he looks like a lion, but since he's loyal, since his name is loyal, I'm envisioning him like a dog. So I think he's like a chow. <laughs> so I'm like, <laughs> but, really I, but I just like him. I, I like how he talks. It's like, cause he's kind of talks like, like he's autistic. Like he kind of, he's very literal in what he says. Mm-hmm. And I think that's really cool. I, I I just, I like his character overall. I think he's a very good, I, I think he's a cool character. Yeah. And, like, like I was saying, they, I, I feel like he's being very underused so yeah. far for what we've seen from him. And I hope we see more of him in the rest of the season. We only have two more episodes in the season. Well, he, but I well, hope we see more of him. Well, he's guiding him through the through the under Everworld, so we're definitely going to see a lot of him in the next. Yeah, episode. but that does that. I mean, you're the underverse. In a, yeah, yeah. That what doesn't I said, necessarily what I said. mean he's going to survive. So, so, but I hope he does. If they kill him, I'm going to be sad. I'm just going to be. I'm going. I might. I'll wear all black and then our next episode just so oh I can be in mourning. Like, I I think he'll be okay though. I I think that's my dog. I you know. Uh. <laughs> Show the shirt, show the shirt. <laughs> and on that note, that's it for our show. You can find us online at www.fandomhybrid.com. We are on social media on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Phantom Hybrid. You can chat with us on our Discord channel. You can watch our videos on our YouTube channel. And you can listen to us on all major podcast streaming platforms. Thanks for listening. We hope you join the conversation next time.